Bridge to Terabithia, Chapter 8, Easter Even though it was nearly Easter, there were still very few nights that it was warm enough to leave Miss Bessie out. And then there was the rain. All March it poured. For the first time in many years, the creek bed held water. Not just a trickle, either. Enough so that when they swung across, it was a little scary looking down at the rushing water below. Jess took Prince Tarion across inside his jacket, but the puppy was growing so fast he might pop the zipper any time and fall into the water and drown. Ellie and Brenda were already fighting about what they were going to wear to church. Since Mama got mad at the preacher three years back, Easter was the only time in the year that the Aarons went to church, and it was a big deal. His mother always cried poor, but she put a lot of thought and as much money as she could scrape together into making sure she wouldn't be embarrassed by how her family looked. But the day before she planned to take them all over to Millsburg Plaza for new clothes, his dad came home from Washington early. He'd been laid off. No new clothes this year. A wail went up from Ellie and Brenda like two sirens go into a fire. You can't make me go to church, Brenda said. I ain't got nothing to wear and you know it. Just cause you're too fat, Maybelle muttered. Did you hear what she said? Mama, I'm gonna kill that kid. Brenda, will you shut your mouth, his mother said sharply, then more wearily. We got a lot more Easter clothes to worry about. His dad got up noisily and poured himself a cup of black coffee from the pot on the back of the stove. Why can't we charge some things, Ellie said in her wheedling voice. Brenda burst in. Do you know what some people do? They charge something and wear it and then take it back and say it didn't fit or something. The stores don't give them no trouble. Her father turned in a kind of roar. I never heard such a fool thing in my life. Didn't you hear your mother tell you to shut your mouth, girl? Brenda stopped talking, but she popped her gum as loudly as she could just to prove she wasn't going to be put down. Jess was glad to escape to the shed as the complacent and the complacent company of Miss Bessie. There was a knock. Jess? Leslie, come in. She looked first and then sat on the floor near his stool. What's new? Lord, don't ask. He tugged the teats rhythmically and listened to the plink, plink, plink in the bottom of the pail. That bad, huh? My dad got laid off and Brenda and Ellie are fit to fry because they don't have new clothes for Easter. Gee, I'm sorry. About your dad, I mean. Just grinned, yeah. I ain't too worried about those girls. If I know them, they'll trick new clothes out of somebody. It'd make you throw up to see how those girls make a spectacle of themselves at church. I never knew you went to church. Just Easter. He concentrated on the warm udders. I guess you think that's dumb or something. She didn't answer for a minute. I was thinking I'd like to go. He stopped milking. I don't understand you sometimes, Leslie. Well, I've never been to a church before. It would be an experience for me. He went back to work. You'd hate it. Why? It's boring. Well, I'd just like to see for myself. Do you think your parents would let me go with you? He can't wear pants. I've got some dresses, Jess Aarons. Would wonders never cease? Harry said, open your mouth. Why? Just open your mouth. For once she obeyed, he sent a stream of warm milk straight into it. Jess <laughs> The name was garbled and the milk dribbled down her chin as she spoke. Don't open your mouth now, you're wasting good milk. Leslie started to giggle, choking and coughing. Now, if I could just learn to pitch a baseball that straight, let me try again. Leslie controlled her giggle, closed her eyes, and solemnly opened her mouth. By now, Jess was giggling so that he couldn't keep his hands steady. <laughs> You got me right in the ear. Leslie hunched up her shoulder and rubbed her ear in the sleeve of her sweatshirt. She collapsed into giggles again. I'd be obliged if you'd finish milking and come on back to the house. His dad was standing right there at the door. I guess I'd better go, said Leslie quietly. She got up and went to the door. Excuse me. 
His dad moved aside to let her pass. Jess waited for him to say something more, but he just stood there for a few minutes and then turned and went out. Allie said she would go to church if Mama would let her wear the see-through blouse, and Brenda would go if she at least got a new skirt. In the end, everyone got something new except Jess and his dad, neither of whom cared. But Jess got the idea that it might give him a little bargaining power with his mother. Since I ain't getting anything new, could Leslie go to church with us? That girl... He could see his mother rooting around in her head for a good reason to say no. She don't dress right. Mama, his voice sounded as prissy as Ellie's. Leslie's got dresses. She's got hundreds of them. His mother's thin face drooped. She bit the outside of her bottom lip in a way Joyce Ann sometimes did and spoke so softly Jess could hardly hear her. I don't want no one poking up their nose at my family. Jess wanted to put his arm around her the way that he put it around Maybell when she was in need of comfort. She don't poke her nose up at you, Mama. Honest. His mother sighed. Well, if she'll look decent. Leslie looked decent. Her hair was kind of slicked down, and she wore a navy blue jumper over a blouse with tiny, old-fashioned looking flowers. At the bottom of her red knee socks were a pair of shiny brown leather shoes that Jess had never seen before, as Leslie always wore sneakers like the rest of the kids at Lark Creek. Even her manner was decent. Her usual sparkle was toned way down, and she said, Yes, I'm and no, I'm, to his mother, just as though she were aware of Mrs. Aarons' dread of disrespect. Jess knew how hard Leslie must be trying, for Leslie didn't say ma'am naturally. In comparison to Leslie, Brenda and Ellie looked like a pair of peacocks and with fake tail feathers. They both insisted on riding in the front of the pickup with their parents, which was some kind of a squeeze with Brenda's shape to consider. Jess and Leslie and the little girls had climbed happily into the back and sat down on the old sacks his dad had put against the cab. The sun wasn't exactly shining, but it was the first day in so long that the rain wasn't actually coming down that they sang, Oh, Lord, what a morning! Ah, lovely meadows! And sing, sing a song that Miss Edmonds had taught them, and even jingle bells for Joyce Ann. The wind carried their voices away from them. It made the music seem mysterious, which filled Jess with a feeling of power over the hills rolling out from behind the truck. The ride was much too short, especially for Joyce Ann, who began to cry because the arrival interrupted the first verse of Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which, after Jingle Bells, was her favorite song. Jess tickled her to get her giggling again so that when the four of them clambered out of the tailgate, they were flushed-faced and happy once more. They were a little late, which didn't bother Ellie and Brenda, for it meant they got to flounce down the entire length of the of the aisle to the first pew, making sure that every eye in church was on them and every expression of every eye a jealous one. Lord, they were disgusting. And his mother had been scared Leslie might embarrass her? Jess hunched his shoulders and slunk into the pew after the string of women folks and just before his dad. Church always seemed the same. Jess could tune it out the same way he tuned out school, with his body standing up and sitting down in unison with the rest of the congregation, but his mind numb and floating, not really thinking or dreaming, but at least free. Once or twice he was aware of being on his feet with the loud, not really tuneful singing all around him. At the edge of his consciousness, he could hear Leslie singing along and drowsily wondered why she bothered. The preacher had one of those tricky voices. It would buzz along for several minutes quite comfortably, and then bang, he was screaming at you. Each time, Jess would jump, and it would take another couple of minutes to relax again. Because he wasn't listening to the words, the man's red face with sweat pouring down seemed strangely out of place in the dull sanctuary. It was like Brenda throwing a tantrum over Joyce and touching her lipstick. It took a while to get Ellie and Brenda pulled away from the front yard of the church. Jess and Leslie went ahead and put the little girls on the back and settled down to wait. Gee, I'm really glad I came. Jess turned to Leslie in unbelief. It was better than a movie. You're kidding. No, I'm not. And she wasn't. He could tell by her face. That whole Jesus thing is really interesting, isn't it? What do you mean? All those people wanting to kill him when he hadn't done anything to hurt them, she hesitated. It's really kind of a beautiful story like Abraham Lincoln or Socrates or Aslan. 
It ain't beautiful, Maybell broke in. It's scary. Melon holes right through somebody's hand. Maybell's right. Jess reached down into the deepest pit of his mind. It's because we're all vile sinners God made Jesus die. Do you think that's true? He was shocked. It's in the Bible, Leslie. She looked at him as if she were going to argue, then seemed to change her mind. It's crazy, isn't it? She shook her head. You have to believe it, but you hate it. I don't have to believe it, and I think it's beautiful. She shook her head again. It's crazy. Maybelle had her eyes all squinched as though Leslie was some strange creature in a zoo. You gotta believe the Bible, Leslie! Why? It was a genuine question. Leslie wasn't being smarty. Because if you don't believe the Bible... Maybelle's eyes were huge. God will damn you to hell when you die. Where'd she ever hear a thing like that? Leslie turned on Jess as though she were about to accuse him of some wrong he had committed against his sister. He felt hot and caught by her voice and words. He dropped his gaze to the gunny sack and began to fiddle with the raveled edge. That's right, ain't it, Jess? Maybelle's shrill voice demanded. Don't God damn you to hell if you don't believe the Bible. Jess pushed his hair out of his face. I reckon, he muttered. I don't believe it, Leslie said. I don't think you've even read the Bible. I read most of it, Jess said, still fingering the sack. It's about the only book we got around our place. He looked up at Leslie and half grinned. She smiled. Okay, she said, but I still don't think God goes around damning people to hell. He, they smiled at each other and tried to ignore Maybelle's anxious little voice. But Leslie, she insisted. What if you die? What's going to happen if you die?